Welcome to Albuquerque UFO UAP Explorations. My name is Birdie, and our guest is Tom K. Hugh, organizer with UFOs Over PA, a dynamic meetup group based in Pennsylvania. Tom brings a wealth of firsthand experiences and captivating stories from the paranormal and supernatural realms. With a lifelong passion for the unexplained, including UFOs, metaphysics, and cryptids, Tom's insights promise to enthrall and enlighten. Tom wears many hats in the realm of the paranormal. Not only is he a key figure in organizing UFO-related events in Pennsylvania, but he also hosts two engaging podcasts, Chasing Prophecy, broadcasted on radio in Louisiana and Mississippi, and labeled Paranormal, a riveting discussion platform on all things supernatural. Additionally, keep an eye out for his upcoming mystery thriller novel slated for release in May. Along with Tom, we will delve into a myriad of topics, including personal UFO encounters, the intricacies of managing a UFO-centric group, and the significance of fostering community within the UFO space. I attended one of Tom's group events last night, a Zoom meeting where his group members were encouraged to share thoughts on anything related to UFOs, including their own experiences. Tom was a gracious and gentle host, recognizing that everyone is at a different point in their journey and giving a thoughtful ear to every guest. If you live in Pennsylvania, check out Tom's group. Now, let's get started. That was wonderful. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. <laughs> welcome, Tom. Thank you so much for coming Absolutely. and talking with us. No problem. Thank you for having me. Thank you for uh, allowing this to happen. I'm so excited. We're going to talk about a bunch of cool things. Absolutely. Yeah. So why don't you tell everybody a little bit about how you got into UFOs and the genesis of your of your meetup group. Okay, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, um, first off, yes, thank you for having me on, and and lovely to hear from everybody. And I hope we get a lot of comments. But yeah, to uh, for everybody, right? So uh, that's for right. Me, for me, I grew up in an. Uh, x-files household I, did. <laughs> I grew up in the unsolved mysteries household i grew up in the you know um italian and also hispanic background where this was commonplace we didn't, we're not afraid to talk about this it wasn't oh that's stupid or anything like that it was wonderful so it, it was more commonplace in my household so obviously when you hear about cool things as a kid you're like hey you know this is pretty interesting so that my journey in the paranormal started very early. Um, I've, I had a paranormal experience before I, I don't even know it. I was told about it. You know what I mean? It was at such yeah. a young age. I don't even remember it, but um, I've had my own experiences as, as a child and, you know, uh, shied away a little bit from it. So it yeah. was, you know, when you get something like that as a kid, nine, eight, nine, ten 10 years old, you know, it's, it's going to go one of two ways, right? I, I'm pretty sure That's it's going right. to go one of two ways. It, you're <laughs> going to be, I want to make my life about this, or this is scary, and I never want to do it again. I exactly. Never <laughs> it was the ostrich in the sand type of thing. You know what I mean? Put your head on the yes. ground. So, so I was the latter. So after you know mine, which I'm sure I'll go into at some point, you know, it was it was pretty scary. I did not, you know, like it. And it shied me, you know, I, I shied away from that sort of thing for a while until I guess I became an adult. Now, when you turn 18, you're technically an adult, but I mean, like, emotionally. Technically. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> emotionally an adult. Right. And for all of us, it can happen at any age. And, and there might be some people who still have it and, you know, rock on. Like, that's awesome. But, you know, <laughs> um, until I became an adult and until I became able to... Hmm, you know, put time behind hobbies and interests that I had that weren't based on others, you know, doing what I want to do type of thing. That's right. when it really opened up tenfold. So um, 
I joined a paranormal society. I, you know, joined many um, groups before starting UFO or before coming on to start or join UFOs over uh, PA. Um, and all of it was good. You know what I mean? It, it was good, but it yes. wasn't what I thought it, it could be. And, right. you know, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel here or anything like that. So I, you know, after one of the events, uh, Mark Way, who's a wonderful creator, he was the one who actually started the group. I yes. was probably member two or three joining, you know, like yeah, yes. the whole group, you know how that goes. And I reached out to him. And after a couple of times of doing a virtual and, and, you know, he asked me to to come on board and he shared the same vision I did is that which was we need to have an area where people of all ages can just come and, and ask questions, talk about stuff they've seen, yes. because a lot of people have had grown up their whole life with this. Don't talk about, don't talk about, don't talk about. And it's not good for anybody. You know what I mean? So, yes, get it out. The, the, you know, a, a problem shared is a problem cut in half is what they say. Right. So, right. you know, talk about all of your stuff. And, you know, not everybody has had a paranormal or or ufo related experience you know they'll bring in their pictures and we're like could this be but you're doing it complimentary you're doing it like you softly you're like i think this could be this but thank you so much you know what i mean for bringing it in or showing yes. this video you know um not being rude or what you know what have you so you know everybody exactly. needs this place that you know you can go and bring yourself talk about your experiences talk about the cool stuff because there's just not an outlet out there so that's the right group, yeah. And the group has grown tremendously, you know, since then. And, you know, our, our, we're trying to find a good time. I'll say that, you know, this group has started on Sundays. It has started on Thursdays. We might move to Tuesdays. It's just, you know, we're trying to get it out to the most people. And it's hard when you have a group of, of you know, hundreds of people because it's never you're never going to get every single buddy. It um, is. You know, I think as long as we're a migrating group and not stationary i think that'll allow for the most people to come in and out because hey if i can't do thursday at six then maybe i can do tuesday at four or i can do tuesday at nine or i you know whatever it might be right and then you can try that out for six weeks and and you know have a make it a carnival travel all over the calendar you know? <laughs> whenever oh uh, i have two wonderful co-hosts mark and jen they're they're wonderful people and um you know, we're really, you know, we, we don't come with an air of, I know everything and here I'm going yes. to preach to all of you. And right. that's something that I wouldn't like. So if I wouldn't like it, I'm sure other people wouldn't like it that way too, you know? Right. So we want to get everybody involved talking. And even if it's, hey, I saw a cool documentary. Cool. Tell us. <laughs> we love TV. I think that's a part, that's, hey, a, that's a part of the Jen curriculum. Jen is here. Jen There's is Jen. here. Check that hey, out. Hey, Jen. Um, that's part of the curriculum. If you, you can't be a, a UFO or paranormal enthusiast and not like documentaries, it's it just it doesn't. That's happen. right. It doesn't happen. I, I've yet to meet one that was like that. Um, so yes, um, Jen is here, and I'm I'm so glad to support turning out PA representing. Um, so to give your group, I guess a, a further explanation of the UFOs over PA, that was just the name to start. <laughs> <laughs> um mark is well people might not know but he's in allentown pennsylvania which is like an hour northwest of philly i'm about 40 minutes southwest of philly you know what i mean so trying to give people an idea we're, we're definitely in the you know pennsylvania on the state geography it's like a rectangle we're the bottom right corner you know what I mean? so let's just yes. think about it that way we're, we're around that corner and then once we started this we've had people hop on and okay, there, I've met somebody from Delaware. Oh, okay, well, I mean, we're right on the board. That's fine. It's 30 minutes to Delaware. Okay, great. Um, met somebody from Maryland. And again, you know, tri state area. That's fine. I met someone from New Jersey. Okay, cool. Then we started getting people from North Carolina, Georgia, Florida, uh, India, Mexico, Canada of just last night. Um, and it's, you know, I'm like, should we change the name or should we just keep it? You know, because we're not like only PA anymore. <laughs> it's just, I think, you know, and that speaks to how great our group is and how w wonderful and um, warming Mark and, and Jen, as, as well as myself, are is that, you know, people keep coming back. We do have uh, 
uh, I would say we have regulars, you know, people come in and out, they'll hop on for three or four weeks and then maybe take some time off and then come back on and all of that. And they're all welcome to, right. because, hey, you know, we would love if there was UFO stuff every week, right, Bertie, you know, but there's just, not. so, <laughs> so maybe they want to uh, come see, you know, they want to see what's going on, but on the times that there's not news or anything like that, we'll bring up a case. Hey, has anyone heard of Kecksburg? Has anyone heard of, like like Roswell? Has anyone heard of you know what I mean? And and go into that a little bit and just uh, also you know go into the case a little bit. But if we don't have a specific case or or you know the conversation just you know we let the, we let it flow right. So we're not going to bring anything back to a main topic. No, nobody wants that. You know if we could get off on a tangent, and we start talking about Bigfoot. Then hey, sure, why not? You know what I mean? But um, <laughs> one thing is. Everybody, I ask them when they join, when they hop on, you know, what got you interested? But I also, you know, want to know what are your beliefs about, you know, um, UFOs, you know, do you, you know, and people don't even know until I ask them, well, do you think they're from another planet or do right. you think they're interdimensional or, and people haven't even thought of that aspect of it. They just think that, you know, it's just a craft in the sky and, who's piloting that craft and you know i think i think we allow for that the step one is the saucers and the the entities right but step two right. is okay where do they come from and you know i i want to open people's eyes up to to where you know because your your guess is as good as mine you know what i mean so <laughs> let's talk, you know let's just talk and, and have a dialogue about what could be be right you know because until you're in there, you know what I mean? Until you're all said and done. And then, you know, after the fact, um, it's fun to speculate. It's fun to talk about. And it's good discussion because, you know, uh, just because um, um, David Grush got on there and said that these were interdimensional. Well, maybe some are. You know what I mean? But it, it, we, we have to not paint with a broad brush, right? <laughs> That's right. You, you, we don't know anything about where where they are coming from who they are what they are it's still a big mystery now it may be true that some members of the um, government crash retrieval team may have mm -hmm. a better idea than we do but most of us just really have no clue and i think it's great that you're so open-minded with your group i'm mm -hmm. i try to be that way with my group too and it's it's awesome to have to have a group where you can mix and meet with people of all different kinds of belief yeah. systems within this space. We've got people who are channeling aliens. We've got people who are hardcore nuts and bolts types. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are, yeah. I, I love all of them. <laughs> I do too. I love them all. It's, it's just amazing. So, so tell me about some of the, um, activity that you've seen in Pennsylvania? Have, have there been any exciting uh, UFO flyovers or anything interesting? Absolutely. There must yeah. be. There's stuff interesting there, there, everywhere. There has to be. I mean, yeah. you, we have, and to be honest, um, you know, we have a state that's bookend. You have two cities right. on the end and trees and mountain in the middle. So right. the geography does lend Despite us being mid-Atlantic, despite us being in the, you know, major city center of the United States, you know how so many millions of people live in like a 90 mile, you know how it is. So, yes. you know, we, we, despite it being there, there is open area and a ton of open area in the middle for things to happen. And I, I briefly mentioned Kecksburg was one of them, you know, that's Pennsylvania's Roswell right. well. and, 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 and that, um, you know, I think it's only Pennsylvania because it landed here. I mean, that thing was over, I think, seven <laughs> states in Canada, too. So but, you know, um, uh, anyway, I digress. There is a good amount of, you know, area to UFO spot. You know what I mean? We, we do have plenty of Appalachian Mountains where there's mountains. There seems to be more activity, I would say. You know, it's just it just lends to that. Um, but no, when, when a part of with a part of UFOs over PA, when we first had started, um we would i would grab video from mufon and just take a look at what happened in the last week you know what i mean and and obviously not yeah. everything happened in the week in pennsylvania but there was there was updates every day i would just take the video i would share my screen and i would say hey look at this now i would i would pick and choose you know because a, a light in the sky in the dark on a cell phone camera like what are you going to do with that you know, right. like, I'm sorry, but it could be, but we're seeing the rebroadcast of the broadcast. It's not clear to us. Um, 
So I would find some that were, you know, track to G because they would give um, latitude and longitude. So I'd have to do a second step in there and be like, all right, hold on, let me Google this. Where is this one at? <laughs> okay, this is over this area of PA and take a look at it. And it would be people that, you know, every once in a while you got one that, you know, using my filter, you know what I mean? Because this is for the group, but I'll take ones that are obviously somebody had faked it, oh, somebody sure. had done, you know what I mean? All of that. Sure. And I would bring it out to the group and say, what are we seeing here? And it was great because people were like, oh, look at that. Yeah, look, do you see how it's moving? It's moving this way, you know, and, and pick and choose the ones that were, you know, it's a, you know, motionless camera. The, the guys, it's not, you know, all over the place. Right. And you would not believe that every single week you had at least two or three that were, Oh wow, this is quality. You know what I mean? In Pennsylvania. And that's our area, let alone, you know what I mean? Cause Nevada tons, California tons, you know what I mean? Sure. Where you sure. are, there's tons. You have, you're, you're an open oh, sky country, you know, yeah, open sky country, New Mexico. Yeah. We're just, they all stop here. <laughs> Absolutely. So, um, there's, you know, and what we do is we try to um, just have a discussion about it. And what I'm, you know, if you don't mind, I can give a little insight into what I do or what I had done over there here. Absolutely. Okay. So I will do this. There you can see. Birdie. Yeah, I, I can see okay. here. Even. All right, great. So there this was captured. This is the opposite area of where we are. If I'm the bottom right corner, this is the Great Lakes Erie, uh, and this is the top left corner. So okay. this is the complete opposite of PA. But take a look at this flashing orb next to the power plant up there. Oh, interesting. And they pan over to show you the power plant. Right. And they're trying to zoom in, but their 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 mirror is like taking some of the focus away. But you can see yeah. the pulsating orb that was actually a report. This happened yeah. two weeks ago. Interesting. Uh, interesting. Yes. So that's just about the video. There's nothing more there. But I wanted to go ahead and show that. They'll, they'll pan back over so you can see the power plant. And from reports, they didn't capture this one, but or they didn't capture on that one. But right. what they did was... Um, what they did was mention in the report to move on that it flew straight up in the air afterward. Oh, um, wow. So, so that's basically it. just to give a nutshell and get, give everybody um, who's, you know, watching along and everything. I just, that stuff is, is free. That stuff is free. Um, you, the national UFO reporting, UFO, UFO reporting center, uh, has that just make an account go in there and search and there will be a, a side column that says media why for yes and then nothing if there's obviously none take a search take a look and you'll be surprised in your area how many things are in the sky that get reported because right. if you were to ask me i'm nowhere near the number if i'm saying oh maybe i would say probably oh there's probably like a thousand a year nope <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, oh, it's, it's an incredible month. amount. It's yes. truly breathtaking. The amount of UFO mm -hmm. reports every year, many yeah. of which are credible. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's, I, I would think there'd be less reporting now because everybody's doing this, you know, everybody's looking down. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> no. right. I, I know that that's, that's like you go anywhere. How many people actually look at the night sky these days? Or even I, the daylight sky. How many people? Most people, they're they've got their phone and they're just staring at it all day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And become you know, an extension of our body. Well, let's let's branch off of that a little bit, okay? Yeah. Let's branch off of that and let's have a little, um, you know, l let's let's have this theory, right? Let me put out this theory. Yeah. Yes, yeah, made only with ten percent of people reporting. Reporters say, yeah, no, that's true. That's true because you know what? If I if I didn't say, you know what I mean? And I'm not right. talking specifically to this group, you know, because we are like that, right? Right. But if, if, if I didn't mention that to the common person, who the hell knows about that website? Who the hell knows? Right, so right, well? right. Yeah, only people, you, you know, police. kind of in the know. <laughs> that, that's not, you know, that that's not what, what you do. That's not how it um, goes. There isn't, 
I would love if there was like a seven one one or an eight one one, and that gave you to the um, <laughs> you know, UFO reporting center, and you're like tic tac six forty five, <laughs> you know, and you just you have a prompt that you're going off of. That would be wonderful. That's the kind of world I li- need to live in. But oh, anyway. that wouldn't get abused. <laughs> Well, yeah, you're right. Maybe they should. Well, they'll have to have, you know, a block list, too. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but, you know, what would it take? And here's a discussion point that I was thinking about that I wanted yeah. to bring up. When we went into it perfectly. This discussion point of what would it take for the mass public to believe a UFO sighting? Because if, let's say, you know, a saucer landed on the white house lawn and got out i guarantee you there's a population and a significant one that would be like it's fake even if it's 100 percent real Uh, uh, yeah i think that that's the case if there were a mass landing somewhere or another big flyover like the phoenix lights i think there would be a percentage of the population that even if they saw it with their own eyes they would they would say oh it's a hologram it's you yeah. know, a government op of some sort. I think people are very reluctant to accept the alien. Would you card. Say that's fear. I would think it's part fear, and it's a big part is cultural conditioning. We have been bashed over the head for right. decades upon decades that that these things do not exist. We are crazy conspiracy theorists if we even entertain the idea, and mm-hmm. that just runs deep. I think in people's psyches. Yeah. yeah you are labeled as a conspiracy theorist if you push back on any sort of idea right and not even you know again with the paranormal community with the ufo community there are some that give us a bad name i mentioned this yesterday you have to be more skeptic than the skeptics you, you know what i mean but you can do that in a polite way to keep people coming back and, and tell them right. no, actually, what you saw is this but hey good on bring bring everything you know um and it's the same way that if you push back you're labeled that you know what I mean? Right, right. Theorist. And no, I'm just a guy with a telescope who wants to go out and look at cool things in the sky, you know, and and eventually I want to go out west and look at. um Oh, I'm uh, drawing a blank here. The uh, the lights right outside Vegas, the. Oh, I can't think of it. You know, um the ones that they call like uh ball lightning and things like that out there oh like, yeah. Yeah. yeah i can't think of their name but um and this is as close as the audience will ever be to a ghost is you know exactly what i'm talking about you're saying right. it out loud in your head it's, right and i still can't think of it that's a, a human way of being a ghost so i like to mention that <laughs> um, yeah but, here michelle has brought up uh, an interesting point here in the comments that as far as if you see something and you want to make a record of it there is the new app enigma which is part of that whole research oh. association that had uh that started up a couple of years ago and they have an app and you can report any sightings on there Oh, wow. Well, thank yeah. you. See, I learned something yeah. new right there. Yeah. And Nick, okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. I mean, let's move into the, let's just move into 2010. That's right. UFO That's reporting. right. Let's, we'll worry about 2020. <laughs> we'll worry about 2020. We'll do that later. Let's just move into the two, 2010. Okay. That's all we want to get. So, you know, we're, we're still on dial up here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a lot of truth to that, Tom, because, yeah. Even even the military pilots are just now starting to get a means by which they can report sightings and they're mm-hmm. still being ridiculed. So, yeah, it's taken up into what, 2023, 2024 mm-hmm. for some of these things that should have been in place decades ago. Decades it's, ago. Absolutely. And, yeah. you know, it, they're finally catching on to. Did you know Canada for the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, they have their own file they have their own person that they report to so the police we don't have that we just take the 911 call i mean you saw what happened in uh, las vegas last summer right the cop went out he he, he took some statements and, and that was it the report now if this was in canada the report that he filed would go to a completely separate department who would take that back to quebec toronto wherever you hey. know their, their headquarters is and file it in a certain way and a woman this is a documentary that I, I watched this on. And the woman that was there, she said, nobody ever asked questions once it was handed off. And you never got a follow up. You never got of an course. email, a phone. You never got anything about right. it. 
but at least they had a method. They had a process for it where we now taking, you know, so many years later, it took us that long to get there. So I think, and, and here I'm going to go out on a limb here and then talk about disclosure. I think the point of disclosure is only to benefit companies and not so much us. And what I mean by that is you have all of these smart individuals that are coming out of these big, bright colleges, all of that stuff. Right. Back in the day, people were more likely to be quiet. In the 60s, 70s, 80s, you had a nuclear arms race with that right. dominated a lot of people's thinking. You don't have that overarching thing right now, right? So right. when you said, I need you, know, I want you to work on this, you know, hey, come on, you can come over. You know, you're going to work on something. You're <laughs> gonna work on something cool. but we can't talk about it. You're more likely to listen in a previous generation than you are in this one. I'm just theorizing, okay? I'm not saying it's. Sure. I, no, no sure. So now. You need to replace those 60s, 70s, 80s brilliant scientists with some new people. You And you're trying to pitch that same old argument. They're not going to fall for it. They're not going to want to go there. They're not going to say, yeah, I, I'll do that. They want to talk about the cool projects they're working on. Everybody has a social media. So I think the disclosure is to backfill some of the retiring or passed on scientists at your big companies, you know, at, at your, you know, BlackRock or, or um, Lockheed Martin or, or all of them, because you, this UFO retrieval program, which has been going on, right. you are still collecting material, but the scientists or the people that you have working on it are getting less and less and less, and you need to fill them up more. So offering disclosure, you can now partner with top universities. You can do MIT. You can have them do a transition program where they work right from there into your company. And so I think it has nothing to do with benefiting us. I think it has to do with, you know, making sure they stay on top. Okay, that's really an interesting point. And I hadn't thought about um, disclosure in terms in terms of meeting a demand that mm -hmm. is caused by, you know, retiring workforce. But we saw this actually exactly what you're talking about in 1995 when the Stargate program, the government's remote viewing program, was declassified. Yes. And the reason, and I firmly believed at that time and still do, the reason they declassified it and made it public was because all of the soldiers that were in the program had just hit retirement age. They were all taking retirement and they knew these guys were going to talk and they had to get in front of what was going to happen. So I think that, you know, this could be a similar situation where they're, they're getting in front yeah. of it, they're recruiting younger workforce. But I think it's mm -hmm. interesting too, just in terms of disclosure and what's going on. And I'm really wondering what you think about this is just the okay. whole national security narrative that's been woven around it in terms of the congressional hearings and what we hear some, some people, like Lou Elizondo, Christopher Mellon, they're framing this in terms of national security. Is it truly mm -hmm. a national security threat, do you think? Or do you think that that's, they're using that as a means of um, making it more palatable, perhaps, to members of Congress and the public at large? Yeah, so absolutely, I don't yeah. think it's the national security way. I think they're using right. it and using that huge umbrella as a national security um, explanation for, for keeping all of this under wraps. Yeah. However, I think that that's starting to go away a little bit because other countries, we had a, a head start and I believe other countries have caught up. Right. You know, so when they use that national security thing, they want to have it both ways. They want to have the a new generation of doctors. Yeah, absolutely. Fear mongering is exactly what it is. Um, but they want to have this new generation um, to come in and work on their stuff, but also have it classified right. because it's national security and you can't talk about it. Um, exactly. Yeah. Like, so, um, I mean, on David Grush's podcast, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Jen, definitely. I do know that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, it's definitely true. But, um, so, you know, David Grush's podcast or when he was on Joe Rogan's podcast, he talked about why is it that I can study nuclear physics in a university, but once it becomes weaponized, it's classic or it's classified, right. right? you know, so use that principle and take it, you know, a step further with alien and UFO retrievals. 
you are using it to make it a national security issue. You don't care about what you find on there. I, they damn sure don't care about the whatever creature or, or entity would be on there. Right. And they want to know under the guise of national security, how can I use this to further my interest? And whatever their interest is, du jour, you know, <laughs> that's yeah, what they're yeah. going to go ahead and do. Right. So if theirs is weaponizing or it is, I mean, I don't know, for example, but stealth or invisibility or, 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 you know, higher rate of speed or bending space and time. That's where yeah. they're going to use as national security because it's such a catch all. It's such a big brush. It that, is. It is. That, and, and the, st how you get that back is by changing the definition or, or putting categories right on what national security is, but you have to go through them to make that change. So you're almost doomed before you even start to right. try to do that. The fact that class, you know, to get to declassification and the fact that it got as far as it did, I'm actually pretty shocked. You know what I mean? Um, I, I am too, to be, to be quite frank, it, it, just how much has happened since 2017 and how far mm -hmm. it has come. It's remarkable, but it still hasn't mm -hmm. gone all the way and they still keep no. reeling it back national security, national security. But if you look, you know, just over the eons, going back to the very beginning of human history, this phenomena has been around us. Mm -hmm. You know, it's been reported in many different kinds of way through or oral storytelling, through paintings, through the ages. Petroglyphs, we've got petroglyphs here in New Mexico that show uh, you know, smaller creatures with big eye, almond shaped eyes and yeah. what appears to be flying saucers carved yeah. hundreds, if not a thousand years ago. And, and so, myself, Jen, I can speak to as well. We are yeah. big history buffs. I think that's one thing that was founded across all three of the the co-organizers of you today <laughs> is 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 all of that historical text yeah it's um, amazing it's all of the historical paintings and you know the the artwork everything like that yes. um and i think you know and and, and to, to robin's point who you had up there i agree i agree that we don't really need to rely on the government and to just look up and and we've you know most of us who are in here we've had our own experience with something yes. you know whether it be benign to a full and some even practice CE5, you know, and that, and that, right. but I think there's, I think there's a part of this community that you are correct in that needs the validation from the government where others might right. not. And right. they, they, I am right. And I need you to tell me I'm right. And that part I think is counterproductive towards our movement. So you're absolutely right, Robin. Yeah. I think, you know, if you, I've had an experience, I know what it is. Other people have, but there's so many in the community that won't stop there. And and what I'm trying to to build and what what we're doing in there is not necessarily for them necessarily. Now we're all inclusive and all of that kind of stuff, but you know we want people to have their who have their own experience or their own questions and feel validated that they have a community to listen to. But you're absolutely right. There, you know, we don't need the government to tell us. We just nope. need to know what it is. And you can come out with all kinds of stories of new craft and, and swamp gas, ball lightning, what, whatever, you know what I mean? What, whatever it is. Right. And the true members, they don't need that. Go ahead and take that. You know what I mean? But there is a big community that they know needs them to say something that they're fighting back with to, to, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for to, um, uh, pull the rug out from the other ones that right. you know from the other members of the community to um oh i can't think of the word right now but you know uh make us less credible is what i'm trying to you know take oh, the sure. credibility away oh sure so um that's a robin that's a wonderful point thank you for for bringing that up yeah so so in your bio you say that you're also interested in cryptids and other oh, kinds yeah. of paranormal experiences and yeah. and i know my group is super into all these kinds of things too so oh, let's well, let's talk them. bigfoot and cryptids and Absolutely. ghosts and everything okay all right so yeah. let's start off with a divisive one this is probably you know i'm not going to make many friends um by saying this but it, it's my belief 
that cryptids are not of this world. And what I mean by that is when we see and when we talk about them and when we have experiences, it's a thinning of the veil between one realm and another, one dimension and another, whatever you want to call it. Um, again, I, I'm not an expert, but I'm just telling you what my theory is based on like how I'm interpreting all of the data, right? You know, that that's all that I can do. I can't, um, you know, speak about anything else but that. It's just my interpretation. And so my interpretation was they are thinning of veils and what we're seeing is them in their own element. That's why we don't have a body. That's why we don't have families. That's why we can't find a pot. And I understand that the world is huge and I totally get all of that. Um, but it's so far until something changes that to me, that's where mine is, is that they don't live in this realm. They're, you know, they're in another. And yes, there was a Bigfoot wave in the 1970s in PA. And it does not surprise me at all because, again, going back, we have two big cities on either side and just trees and mountains in the middle. Uh, Pennsylvania <laughs> is the name that they affectionately call it. Oh, Pennsylvania, love it. <laughs> is what they, no, it, it's true. It's what they tell you up here. You, yeah. It's farms. Yeah. And, and all of that. And there's absolutely a 100% area that, that Bigfoot could hide. And what you're talking about is Johnstown. Um, and they had a cryptid or they had a Bigfoot wave. You're right in the seventies. And it, it almost traveled up and down the Appalachians right there. So, you know, when you get closer to Pittsburgh, then think of like South, you're not Maryland, you're more West Virginia, Virginia, Kentucky area kind of thing in there. There was a wave of them at the time. And I, you know, th that never really been flushed out or anything like that. And, uh, oh, good God. Well, you know, I don't think... <laughs> Uh, human, human bird hybrids Jen is mentioning her chat here that I mean, is creepy I would, I'm sorry I, I guess that that's a human absolute. bird being named birdie but well you're yeah maybe she was talking about you but <laughs> <laughs> um, where's the distinction is it top half bottom half <laughs> is it, is it, you know, it has to be because you can't go down the middle you only have one wing what the hell is that going to do for you <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but um, yeah, bir big birds though, Jed. Big, big, big birds are another one because we we're terrible. Oh yeah, pterodactyls. Like people, like people yeah. those yeah, people reporting enormous pterodactyl type birds or other huge, huge avians of some sort or another. But I know that here in New Mexico, there mm -hmm. are a number of Native American tribes uh, in pueblos that have had numerous encounters with Bigfoot. Yeah. And in some of them have um, collected hair samples, even feces samples. Now that's not to say that they didn't come in through the veil from some other mm -hmm. plane of existence. I, I, you know, the word interdimensional gets thrown around a lot, but there is no yeah. valid scientific no. definition for that no, term. I'm not going to sit here and a, say there is. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a catchphrase, but, yeah. but you know, but, there have been many Bigfoot sightings associated with UFOs seen at the yes. same time and the same kind of uh, activity going on. And uh, that certainly happens here in New Mexico. Have you had that kind of sighting uh, oh, yeah. pop up um, in Pennsylvania? I bet you have. There, yeah, there, there's one that comes to mind. And again, this is out, you know, um, middle PA type area of a, you know, the, the classic Bigfoot um phenomena so the the right. banging trees the house right. the, the throwing of the rocks i mean as cliche as you can get but also reports of unexplained lights in the sky um, yes. this is an area in the middle that is not a government area it's not there's not the military bases there yeah no one is saying that bigfoot no. is a national security threat <laughs> no no but what what it could be is you know a scout if you want to take it in that way it could you know it right, right. that would make sense that it can breathe our air it can you know typically when you have ufo um and and alien encounters when they tried you know you've heard of the men in black you've heard of the r replica type ones where they yeah. look sort of human and they're but they're a little off because they're not from here they're trying to uh, you know paint a painting of a picture 
And so I think right. if they tried to do that of a monkey, that's exactly what Bigfoot would look like. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so maybe it's the scout, maybe it's something designed to blend in. They're like, oh, they won't know. But we're like, yeah, what is, <laughs> you know, what, what is that? But, you know, sample readings, soil readings, um, uh, what, what have you. I, I, I know for a fact there's many stories of people seeing strange lights in the sky and then the hoops, the howls and the sticks and the throws and the rocks and, and everything like that. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. There we go. You know, that that's right up my alley and, and Jen's as well, actually with, um, um, you know, ancient Sumeria and the hairy wild men. And we had, um, Jen could probably do it more justice, but we had a wonderful, uh, viewing of Tartarian races and we, that spoke into this of, about that. Um, and sometimes, you know, Jen has been great about organizing watch parties of different things and then having a discussion about it afterwards. Yeah. Um, but no, absolutely. You know, could now, now I'm going to open up a can of worms with this one. But, <laughs> um, you know, if you were to believe Book of Enoch, if you were to believe, you know, oh, sure. uh, ancient Sumeria and you believe even before that with um, possible Anunnaki, you right. know, around who's to say they only made one try at making the human. Oh, yeah. There are all those theories because people have found archeologists have found things inside buried. It, well, it formed, mm -hmm. you know, rock has formed around them. So these things must be millions of years old and they're little pieces of technology, screws and wires and all kinds of strange things. So it is possible that, it, it, life is cycl cyclical in nature and we have died and been reborn multiple times throughout history. It certainly history. seems that yeah. way, doesn't it? It certainly it does. seems it that we, we've had multiple goes at this and maybe we're getting better each time around or maybe not. Um, I saw, you know, I read a wonderful piece about how our symbiotic relationship with technology and, and technology is actually the supreme being of this and it makes us better to make it better. Oh, it's interesting. Too big, it gets too big. Right. Solar flare knocks out all the technology and right. us back in the stone age, because we had to live underground and all that. We come out and we start doing it again. Right. Um, certainly not going to give a, a full on answer about that one, but, <laughs> you know, but, but it's documented. And some people, you know, do take that and they think that's possibly what, you know, could be happening in, in, in life and, and right. life, I mean, like overall in general, not just yours or mine. Um, but yeah, if the Anunnaki were to create multiple tries at the Homo erectus and their DNA, maybe they went 75, 25 instead of 50, 50. And that's what she sure. got. And they said, we're, we can give this something that it can stay on this planet. We don't want to kill it, but we can give it a way to hop in and out of dimensions. And I think that would be wonderful because um, I would always like that. They're the, you know, how they say they're the hide and seek champion, right? Right. <laughs> um, uh, but if we, you know, if we were to think that Anunnaki, Bigfoot and things, they're higher dimensional beings. And if you believe time is the fourth dimension, that means they can interact with it. We can just track it, but never interact with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so we could go off in a metaphysical argument that way of, oh, sure. you know, what, what is the fourth dimension? But if they're sitting there at higher, you know, how we can, we can imprint on 1D, 2D, and obviously in 3D in our world, but we can't go higher. If you were to believe those laws, if they were from five, they could interact with time to, be gone right in front of your face it was here and then it was gone how many times have you heard that story yeah yeah and people see these things just disappear into thin air or they see a literal portal opening up and creatures yeah. coming out like d described oh, yeah, yeah. in walker ranch other locations as well absolutely um yeah. skinwalker ranch is another another odd area because i just don't yeah. think see money's not the problem there with Robert Bigelow, money's not the problem, but it's still so odd. Uh, you know, I just don't know if at this point, 2024, we have enough technology to make a difference, whether we want to learn about something or not. I just don't know if we're there yet. I don't think we are. Honestly, I don't think we are. I think that, I mean, certainly the common man isn't there yet, just in terms of technology you can buy off the shelf. I can't get questions answered about what these things are. 
we don't even have access to real data about many different incidents. We are, just have stories, some photos and videos mm -hmm. that we can access, but we don't have access yeah. to metamaterials, crash retrieval, data, bodies, the biologics, huh. as Rush would say. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you, we would, right? If, okay, they're pulling it out to the town square and everyone can come take a look at this alien body, right? Let's say that <laughs> happened. Again, getting back to the point, people are going to say that's not real. If that's it was real, yeah. Yeah. Yes. So they don't have to discredit us. We do that for them. <laughs> we, we do. And, I, and so, so let me ask you this because sure. I have had this argument with so many different people, or just you know differences of opinion. If say the president tomorrow gets yeah. out there on a podium and says we are not alone. And then they show evidence and, and suppose they actually show enough evidence so that the bulk of America and the world at large thinks, okay. okay, this is real. This is true. Do you think that it would cause societal collapse, riots in the streets? Or do you think people after a week or two of incessantly Googling it and watching every YouTube they could, that they'd just go back to their regular life and kind of forget about it? Oh man, that's such a good question. <laughs> um, okay. So we're, let me break this down. We are taking, okay. People believe it. They're not, you know, it, it's people believe this. Yeah. We're, we're, we're just making the assumption they're going to believe it um, based okay. on, on the data presented in the individuals. Maybe they get some religious leaders up there, the Pope and who knows who else to make a statement so that enough people actually believe it. I'm just wondering if you fall on the side yeah. of Eh, no one, no one cares or mm -hmm. the side of, oh my God, there's going to be riots in the streets and societal unrest and it's going to change everything or somewhere in between. Uh, so I will say there's somewhere, it's probably somewhere in between. Um, I'm going to say that you will have your people who this pulls the rug out from under them, their, their whole world shattered and, and they right. cannot go on. And you might have even suicides and, and things like that. Oh, sure. I think I think that that's probably realistic to think. Also, um, with re now having religious leaders, now that you mentioned that caveat, I think it's going to go a little better because there are people who still right. follow their faith and and what their faith says. And you know, in many books of the Bible that are band or whatever you want to call them they do talk about extraterrestrials in one shape way shape or form but you know the main text conveniently leaves a lot of that stuff out there so <laughs> when you have that and and people are are more comfortable religiously yeah i think it would go a little easier um i do think it would open up not to societal collapse but it's definitely a shift because you're going to open up well, I want to know everything I can about them. I right. want to know everything, you know, about them. You, um, are they friend or foe? And then you're also going to have, well, if they come near me, it's new and I don't like it. Fear is the dominant emotion on this planet. So when yeah. you have fear of something that you don't know, I think it's going to cause some issues. I, so that's why I only say it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be, um, everybody's happy and all this kind of stuff, you know, and then blindly following this, that, and the other. I do think that, um, you know, you have people when you come out and give some sort of, you know, r what are you going to call it? like, uh, r they're, they're short. Okay. This is, they're right. aliens. This is okay with us religiously, this and that. But then you also have your other set that I don't know what they are. I don't want them near me and could cause issues that way. So I guess that's how. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess it would depend on which religious leaders step forward too, because, uh, uh, you know, by all accounts, there's a faction in the Department of Defense that believes that, that these are demonic creatures. Oh, yeah. And then, and then you have the Catholic Church. They have been working on theological position papers to, to bring in the extraterrestrial question into the Catholic faith. You know, the Pope's already come out and said, well, he'd baptize an alien. Yeah. So well, that was nice of him. I know. Very nice. <laughs> I grew up Catholic. So, well, 
if, as long as it's not the signs of aliens, because I think they can't have water. But as long yeah, as right. <laughs> no full Turtle. immersion for them. <laughs> yeah, we think this wonderful, beautiful thing, and you kill it right there in front of everyone. It's like, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here's a good point um, from Jen, where she she's saying that she thinks there are groups that want us to fear aliens, and then on the other hand, we have a comment here from Michelle saying that. Uh, 65 percent uh, believe that in, uh, intelligent life outside of humanity exists. Yeah, no, there was actually uh, uh, what is it? You you go or you pull that? I saw that there's that confirmed like basically those numbers there that yeah they you know um, people do believe that it exists. Um, but one thing I will say is you asking me here whether it exists or not, and me giving an answer might be different than you pull, bringing it to my planet and see that, you know, okay, That's this actually very does exist. true. Yeah, because it's an academic question for most people, uh, unless they've had some kind of deep personal experience with it. That's a very good point. Yeah. It's, yeah. So, so that's where, like, my little um, caveat would be yeah. there. Like, I'm not saying, hey, you know, whatever, but... It, Hey, they exist versus do you think they exist? I think that question would 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 get some people um, a little confused or or might might change their answer a bit because it's fun to want things and think. But now that they're here, you know, and then what's right. the plan? You, you say that, you know, that they're here. Do we have to watch out? Are you going to make some sort of integration program or is you going to give them some land out in the ocean? <laughs> like, what you know, <laughs> what, what's next? I think. Right. Um, Actually, now fleshing that out a little bit, I think that would be that needs to be addressed, too, you know, because if they do say, hey, they exist and that's it, you're it's not smart. You're leaving it open ended. You know what I mean? You're right, definitely right. leaving it open ended for people to make their own interpretations, because if you don't give them a solid, well-rounded thing, you're not going to know. Yes. Hey, just think how many group members you would get if. uh the president would, came out tomorrow. <laughs> UFOs I, I, over PA would need a, a, a bigger Zoom account. <laughs> it would. It would. It would, it would. seriously. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I think it would be wonderful. And, you know, whichever one lands first, I'm going to try to get them on whenever we're on. <laughs> Tell us about yourself. You know, that it's is okay going to be the it's, most it's requested online. interview of all time. If a live alien, yeah, starts uh, making they would, podcast rounds, they would call it public domain and screw me out of money. You know how it goes. <laughs> That's exactly what would happen. <laughs> <laughs> I got the interview. <laughs> yeah, That's exactly what would happen. Yeah. Hey, last night on. At your group Zoom call, you you told yeah. an interesting story about an experience that you had, and yeah. I I I know I think people would love to hear this story. It's super Absolutely. interesting. Yeah. So yeah, I I kind of um, mentioned it a little bit earlier, but you know um, I'll go into it. So my first encounter, um, I guess it's my best encounter, my biggest encounter. Anyone. Um, would be that uh, I was on a trip. Uh, I was nine or 10 years old at the time. And I was going down to Florida uh, to see cousins. They live down in Florida. Uh, I don't have flyers in my family. So we drove. So from Philadelphia to where they lived in Florida is a 20 hour drive. So it's not the best. Right. So, you know, um, we're driving, we get to South Carolina and my mother, and my grandmother, they noticed something out of the right side of the car. And out of the right side of the car, there was this light and it was more like cigar, more saucer cigar type of shape. Um, think of two dinner plates on top of each other like this. You know what I mean? Like that uh, typical UFO shape. It yeah. was that it was illuminated in a way that I can't explain. It wasn't like a light. It wasn't like a headlight. It wasn't like a car light. It was illuminated where you could see every single bit of it. And the clarity did not. It didn't lose clarity. You know, when you have a bright light, you can't see anything around it. You, this was a bright light that illuminated it. Um, there was a town off in the distance in a field right outside uh, or right next to the road. This is major interstate. If anybody's been to the East Coast, you know I-95. So 
we pull over to the side of the road because there's other people pulled over to the side of the road out of their cars on the interstate, um, <clears throat> out of their cars looking, saying, what is that? What, what's up there in the sky? No more than three or four minutes. That's all it took for us to get out of the car and look where the police, the state police of South Carolina were driving up and down the side of the road or on the road and telling people to get back in their cars because, duh, it's a big safety <laughs> issue. You, know, you can't be outside of your car right. on an interstate. Um, they kept driving up and down with their bullhorn saying, it's just a blimp. It's just a blimp. Keep going. Well, I'll <laughs> never forget that. I'll never forget what it looked like and the feeling I got. I knew at that age I was looking at something that I didn't understand, that I didn't know, that I didn't, you know, uh, perceive as normal or on this planet. Mm. And that's the thing that I took away from the whole thing the most. Anybody can look up and you see a sky and you don't in the sky and you see a light and you don't know quite know what it is. The people that I've talked to, once you look at something, you don't know what it is. You have a different feeling that, oh, I don't understand what this is. It was that feeling that I took away that really, you know, made it a sort of traumatic event, if you want to think about right. it, that I didn't really want to know any more about UFOs. Nobody ever told me they were real. Nobody, you know, whatever, you know. So that's a little bit of answering your question before, Bertie, about it's one thing to say, yeah, I believe in aliens until you have your encounter and see exactly. something you don't understand. Exactly. So that was my first encounter. We got back in the car. We talked about it. We drove and you kind of forgot about it. But I can close my eyes right now and still see exactly what that thing look like how it was different you never forget it you never I never will it. never never yeah wow so that's you know that is young nine-year-old and ten-year-old tom that's his story <laughs> of what his you know his ufo story and his origin story for anything um mm. because i would tell i'll be very honest with you throughout the next 10, 15, 10, 15 years of my life, I would love to trade that story in and never have to think about or had to think about it. And now right. that you mature, you become comfortable in your adult body. I wouldn't give that story up for anything. Yeah, that's an amazing story. And so many people have similar stories like that, and they've probably never shared it with anyone else. Yeah. Well, so yeah, that's be, why they community want to be is so outing. important. Right, right. They don't want to be outed. They don't want to be made fun of. Yeah. And it's also scary just to have the words come out of your own mouth if, you, if you're if you not used to sharing stories like this. It can be just daunting to even get the words out until you get used to talking about it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. what we're not, we don't want to be ridiculed. We don't want to be made fun of, but that's we right. know what we saw. Exactly. And, you know, how, how, how much is your resolve or right, being true to yourself versus wanting to be liked? Well, that's why I wanted to create a group where you can be both. <laughs> right. That's wonderful. So but, here we've got a question sure. here from the audience. The doctor. The doctor. Like Good name. <laughs> you or anyone in your group had two way communication with aliens. So I, I I've touched on a little bit of CE5 and I have a member of my group who I don't know if you would, if it would be alien or not, but who has gone out West to, uh, again, she just mentioned the desert. She didn't, I don't remember exactly where it was and practice with a, she still calls him a master and can't tell you what type she was practicing, what meditation, what, what have you. Um, yeah, Jen, Susan, um, and she went out there, trained, became able to, I don't want to butcher it, but almost like astrally project her consciousness out of her body and intertwine with spirits. And she's mentioned many times, these are like gaseous entities, not like creatures, not like anything like that. It was just more of like a neon glowing gaseous thing that she would pass her consciousness because she would transform into that you know or, or pull that out and she would transform into that right through go right through and everything that it knew or wanted to impart on her she got so there was no talking there was no teaching there was no um 
you know, reading or anything. She just knew exactly what that was. So in terms of your question, um, I don't know if that can be, cons- if, if you can call that alien, but I do know someone and have someone in the group who is fairly often a member of that group um, that, you know, I would love to, you know, get her, if I knew when she was coming on to have members of your group being able to ask, but she would be able to leave her physical body. She did mention that and receive, she called them other higher dimensional spirits is what she called them because that's what the master called them. And if that happened to you, I don't know if you would have a definition in your, in, in your brain. I know I would, <laughs> you know, yeah. what these are. So if, they could possibly be alien if you are on the interdimensional wave or, you know, you believe that they can trans or come here through d- uh, the dimensional plane. Then if you wanted to go there, then yes, I feel confident saying she had a um, telepathic connection with multiple times, multiple and this isn't just once with um, UFO spirits. Oh, that's very cool. Mm hmm. <laughs> And you told me that, um, Bertie, you told me that they, they do have groups out where you are as well. Yeah, we have CE5 group that um, w- their next outing is on April 6th, Saturday, April 6th. And they're going up to the foothills of the Sandia Mountains here. And that's mm-hmm. the regular place where they do CE5. It's uh, something we promote through our group. And it's a once a month. CE5 outing and as a number of people go up there and many people have experiences doing CE5. They see orbs very frequently. Sometimes they've seen, you know, just the description you were just giving that your friend Susan had Mm -hmm. uh, experienced that kind of an entity. We we had a CE5 presentation uh, that we did with our group and, and a couple of our experienced CE5 meditators gave a presentation uh, last month. And they mentioned about these kind of blue translucent beings that they saw during a CE5 event. So that reminded me of what you were talking about. I don't know if she remembers, and and Jen, speak up if you remember. I don't know if she mentioned the color, um, but it was definitely translucent. Translucent, you know, um, gas ish, you know, um, a a male. No, she's like, we weren't physical. I couldn't touch them, but it couldn't touch me either. You know, right. so um, it, again, it's we're, we're at the mercy of our own definitions, right? Exactly. And how we can explain if we don't have the vocabulary yeah. for it. Good luck trying. Um, <laughs> and this is new ground for all of us. Um, it yeah, it is. Beginning. It is. There are so many different aspects of the phenomenon and so many different ways to approach it. Some people are more hands on. They want to get out there and have an experience. Yeah. Some people don't ever want an experience, but they're fascinated by it and love to read and watch documentaries. So yeah. it's, it's I would still the latter, to be honest with you. <laughs> hey, you've had experience. I've had experience. Uh, oh, I'm too, talking about like CE5, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, um, you know, I, I don't want anything in my brain. I don't want to know <laughs> anything I'm thinking. <laughs> but no, the, the, um, yeah, I, I have had, that experience um you know all all across the you know across the board you know equal opportunity paranormal enthusiast is what i'll I'll call myself right right but um you know susan and she hasn't been on in a bit so maybe maybe if we change she'll she'll come back on but she was somebody that was a great resource because she enabled a lot of others I don't want to say walls to come down because she was yeah. a nurse. She was a technical profession, you know? Yeah. And she, she was like, yeah, openly talking about, you know, I, I saw Jen's comment. She was openly talking about being a nurse and a hospice nurse and, and loving it and, and being there when people would pass on and unexplained things, lights coming out of them, doors shutting, you know, a room right. getting lighter, a room getting brighter, you know, things like that, that, you know, no matter what you want to call it, that is paranormal because it's not the norm. And if you want to take a cop out definition like that, by all means, because that what else are you going to use? That's what it was. Exactly. So, um, you know, I, I just think um, we, you know, we should keep our eyes out. I do think it's growing. I do think more people are keeping their eyes open 
for things, you know, not just in the sky, but, you know, um, you know, paranormal realm, cryptids, things like that. Uh, right. The world is getting smaller with technology. You know, that, that absolutely is true. Is. Um, 10 years ago, I don't think you or I could have fathomed us doing this. No, even no, live. this wouldn't have even been possible. And this is amazing. We're here live, our two groups getting together, whoever was able yeah. to make it live and everyone can watch this afterward that wasn't able to make it yeah. during the live show. And it's amazing. And hey, and I would like to extend an invitation to everyone in your group to come out and visit us in New Mexico, come out um, for the Roswell ufo festival or come out later in the year and uh, we'll show you a good time take you to all the ufo spots oh uh, i'm yeah uh, i think that's wonderful um i'm personally gonna make sure i take you up on that <laughs> um, <laughs> and yeah it's just it's um it's an area that we could get to it's an area that we can um you know maybe even have a uh, collaboration again you know what i mean a, i think we should. yeah you know right. something where we yeah. can discuss all of the weirdly things and let's get a good story from now in between now and then that we can really discuss you know another miami that mall or another Las Vegas <laughs> family or you know something like that because yeah we should do we should do some crossover events i think that would be absolutely oh, we wonderful would be and, and i and i encourage anyone in Albuquerque UFO UAP explorations to check out UFOs over PA and attend some of their Zoom meetings. Anna and everyone in UFOs over PA is welcome to join Albuquerque UFO UAP explorations. And yeah. we have lots of online events that we're holding too. So we have in-person events for those in the state. Yeah. Or visiting. Um, yeah. Yeah, but um, yeah. Jen, oh, yeah, uh, and Michelle's pointing this out too. A bunch of us are going to contact in the desert. Oh, okay. so if anyone's going to contact in the desert, when is that? uh, that's the uh, first weekend of June. It's the biggest UFO conference of the entire year. Oh, Over sixty wow. speakers. It's in Palm Desert, California. It is so much fun. Everyone. I'm sure everyone goes to it it's super fun so that's wonderful i mean yeah look us up if, yeah, if anyone yeah. if anyone I'm is sure, uh, for sure i'm sure some of us or we're jealous over here because you guys get all the the big events and yeah <laughs> but no um, we i'm sure our group would love to go at least the three um co-hosts uh, of it i'm sure we'll make it out oh, but jen yeah, is having a watch jen. there we go she's having yeah. a watch party um so please join our group and, and jump in on the watch party it's something a little different that that um we do but we watch something and we discuss it and get people's opinion on it and it, it's definitely it was absolutely a blast last time because we love when people don't have the same take on everything and it promotes a good discussion you know it promotes us you know getting to know one another about what our beliefs are in certain things so it's definitely a, a wonderful time and um yeah um jen if you can just go ahead and post the uh you know our group link or our group uh, or to that that individual event and that would be wonderful to have uh whomever you know hop on because yeah like i said we're yeah you know, and if you go to e either group i am a member of ufos or pa now so if if yeah. anyone over there wants to check out our group just click on my head there in the member list yeah. i'm birdie and then you'll find the link I, to my group and vice versa tom's in our group so yeah, i'm in your group too yeah. so i'm sure i'll crash a event or so that would be great yeah we're doing we have a few f super fun online things coming up and they're going to be awesome yeah, yeah i'm sure it's going to be a great time uh, i yeah. you know this thing is growing exponentially i can't you know it is with, with just general content you know disclosure every few you know every so many months you'll have okay well an update to that hearing you know right um, good or bad it's We've every had day it's yeah. every day there's some news on you know on uh x or twitter or whatever people are calling it these days or on reddit ufo twitter. reddit i do it. i do too i, yeah, call, it I call it twitter yeah and just every day uh, multiple times a day there's something new new video new comment from somebody in congress it's really hard to keep up <laughs> 
the closed door meetings, man. That's where all the business that's gets um, yeah. um, done, you know. <laughs> and it's probably already done before they even get in there. But, you know. Yeah. You know how it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for, no. for um, doing this cross-group event with me and talking that's about so all funny. your experience. It's, and um, we'll have to do this again sometime soon. Absolutely. Yes. No, yeah. thank you so much. It was wonderful getting into your group, getting to talk, answering questions from many, many interesting um, individuals, you know, and, and this is the thing. A lot of them never met me, seen anything, knew anything about me before, but I like that a lot of the things I was talking about, what they were talking about, we resonated with each other because right. for the good of the communities, for the good of learning exactly. and understanding. It's not That's Tom right. up here, you know, it preaching and everything like that. Mm -hmm. It was wonderful. And, you know, I'm sure our other co-hosts would love to hop on and and do this, too. And, you know, just spread the awareness of, That's of right. your vote and, and, and all of our different theories. Uh, we all branch off into some other some some subset right of the ufo oh everybody um, does yeah yeah so you know jen's a resident expert and she's our amateur anthropologist as she says um and <laughs> you know mark is very in in depth with metaphysics and that's his his realm too so each one of us you're going to get something different to hear and to listen and, and everything so again thank you everybody it was wonderful birdie it was absolute pleasure thank and you, uh, yeah, absolutely we got to do this again absolutely do this again thank you so much okay everybody so we love you yep. bye see you next time <laughs> <laughs>